Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Gene Edwards. You're watching Lubed. This is the off-season edition for June the 12th, 2022. And this is my take on who is going to stay and who is going to go. Many, many UFAs this year uh, and, and RFAs. Um, so we're going to dive into who I think is going to stay, who I think is going to go. And we're even going to talk about a coach. Actually, we'll talk about the coach right now. Yes, he will stay. Jay Woodcroft will 100% stay. Uh, Cates is going to basically leave an open checkbook for him. Um, and if not, then the Oiler organization is a bunch of idiots. Because he turned this ship around from a disaster to be the last four teams remaining in the NHL season. So props to him. Now, I mean, look, it, it, we have McDavid, we have Drysaddle. All of those guys played a factor, but all those guys were playing a factor in their tippet as well, and they were losing. They were losing horribly. Jay Woodcroft is well liked by his players. He explains things to the players in a way that they compute and understand his methods and I think that's the big difference that is the biggest difference he is staying 100% he's going to get a whole crap load of money thrown at him but he is staying Colton Sevier um, he is going to stay as well um, but I believe it will be team friendly contract it's going to be under a million He's going to probably be in the minors, and he's just a depth piece call-up for injuries when needed. Kyle Turris. Gone. He is gone. I cannot see the Oilers bringing him back. He looked lost at the best of times when he was on the ice, so I really don't think, even no matter what money is even offered at him, I don't think he is a fit for the Oilers. Um, so I can see Kyle Terrace no longer part of the organization going into the 22-23 season. Derek Broussard, we picked him up at the deadline from Philadelphia as a deaf piece going into the playoffs. Um, he didn't play very many playoff games either, so I honestly don't see him returning. Um... He is a depth piece. I think the money just that he'll be asking is probably not going to be worth it for the Oilers to keep him. The Oilers are really tight against the cap this year, and there's a lot of pieces that Holland is going to want to try to sign and try to pull some miracles on. Um, but I just can't see Derek Bassard last, lasting Josh Archibald. This time I kind of had to kind of go over and think about it. I think he stays um, just because he brings that tenacity. Um, but I think the money is going to have to be very close to the previous contract. Maybe a little bit of a raise, but not too much. Chris Russell, gone. Yes, the all-time leader of block shots in the NHL will be leaving the Edmonton Oilers this year. He's been too much in and out of the lineup, and I think a lot of it is from injury from those block shots. Um, but I just think that the Oilers will move on from him this year. Um, I mean, Ken Holland gave him a contract of 1.2 last year. Uh where Shirelli four years ago dumped $4 million a year at him, which at that time, I hate to admit it, but I was like, yeah, he's worth it because he was blocking shots. Like, I love the way he was blocking shots, but to pay a defenseman $4 million just because he's blocking shots, it's a bit much. Um, I know you're putting the body on the line, but it's a bit much. Ryan McLeod, he is going to stay 100%. The Oilers need... To keep Ryan McLeod. Um, his entry level contract days are over. And he's going to be getting a raise. He's going to get paid. I'm putting somewhere around the 2.5, 3 million. 
range. Um, and if it goes any higher than that, it will be a bridge contract. Um, right now at 2.5 and 3 million, it could very well be a bridge contract as well. But I'm sure that the Oilers will sign him because he brings a tenacity. He's got speed. He's really starting to become a valuable piece to the organization. Yessi Pugliarvi, I think, is going to be gone. Um, I just think he's still trying to find his game, and it's it comes and goes with Yessi Pugliarvi. When he's net crashing, he's usually a very valuable force, um, but when he's not, it's not usually going that well for him. Um, so I can see him gone. Um, because the Oilers are going to have to get rid of some pieces to keep some pieces. It's simple as that. Uh, and one of those pieces that the Oilers have to keep, and I believe will stay, is Kyler Yamamoto. Uh, he's, he's a heart and soul player. You have to keep guys like that. You have to keep guys like that. And he will get paid. He's another guy that's going to get paid. He will get a bridge deal, I think, because I think the money he's going to be asking for is going to be where Holland is really trying to negotiate. He may even go into the season as an RFA, um, but or sorry, as a yeah, as an RFA and unsigned, um, as they still might have to be trying to work out some deals. This one might be a tough one to figure out, but I do believe he will stay when it's all done and said. He brings the tenacity. He brings the punch. He's a guy that I really want to see the Oilers keep. I'll be very disappointed if he leaves. Um, but it also depends on the money he's asking for as well. And if it's possible. Miko Koskinen. Gone. Um, Miko is actually a very good goaltender um, as far as a backup goes. I don't think he could ever be a starting goaltender. I don't think he has it in him to play that many games um, because he did have troubles this year when Smith was gone and he had to take the the helm. But that being said, he didn't have much help from his teammates back then when Tippett was coaching um, as they left him hanging out to dry on so many occasions. Now, a goaltender needs to make some saves. Everyone knows that. A goaltender needs to stop the puck once in a while, and sometimes a goaltender needs to steal the game for the for their team. And Miko did that a couple times this year. There's no question without a doubt. Um, but going back to the defense, the defense have to support a goalie, and unfortunately, he is the last line of defense, so when a horrible game happens and they lose by six goals or something well they always point to oh miko had a bad night miko had a bad night i tried to really look at the soft goals that he let in and there was quite a few soft goals that he did let in and that's where i'm on the fence with him um, but i just think his time as an Edmonton Oiler has been finished i think we are gonna see um mike smith if he doesn't retire and i'm gonna get into that um, and, um, Skinner running the, uh, show next year. Um, Mike Smith, is he going to stay? Is he going to go? I think he stays and I'll tell you why. Um, his love for the game is amazing. And the season that he had was horrible. It was a write-off of a season, but his playoff, his playoffs were something to be uh, discussed in. He had a few low lights, there's no question, and they were usually in game one of every series, but he would turn it around with exception to the Colorado series. The Colorado series, he just, I think he was just done. And that's that's the thing, is that, was that series the series that he realized, holy cow, I'm I'm tired. Like I, I can't do this anymore. So we'll see what happens with him, um, because he did have a lot of rest during the regular season. Um, but when it came playoff time, first two rounds he was absolutely stellar with with exception to a few hiccups here and there. Came to that third round, 
But then again, Colorado was a force, too. Colorado was a force. Okay, let's get into Evander Kane. Now, this is a tricky one. So I guess prior to getting to Evander Kane, I should talk about Duncan Keith, because this, trust me, this will all play in all together. If Duncan Keith, now he's been noted that he might want to retire as well. So him and Smith have already been uh, discussing the potential bits that they may be retired. And Kenny Holland has asked both of these players to give him an answer by July the 1st. So we should hear in the next few weeks of what is what. If Duncan Keith retires... It's going to free up his $5.5 million cap hit plus a $3.3 million plus recapture fee for $8.5 million freed up cap space for the Oilers, which means the Oilers will sign Evander Kane. If that happens, the Oilers will sign Evander Kane and he will stay aboard for, for a few more years with the Oilers. Because Evander Kane is going to be looking at... Six, seven, anyone paying eight might be paying a bit much because because of his history with other teams and that I would I wouldn't want the Oilers paying eight for him. Um, I would honestly six and a half is probably maximum I would want to go. Um, but he is gonna want to get paid, and there's no chance Evander Kane is gonna take the home count, hometown discount considering his bankruptcy issues and all that kind of stuff. He wants to get money back into his life. He's got a family to provide for, all that. No chance he's going to take a hometown discount. So the only way he will stay is if Duncan Keith retires. Other than that, he's gone, 100%. He will not return to the Edmonton Oilers lineup. So it's hinging on Duncan Keith retiring. If he does, he stays. If he doesn't, he's gone. And we'll see what happens. Uh, and as far as defenseman Brett Kulik goes, 100% staying. The guy wants to be an Edmonton Oiler. Um, and he'll be making maybe two and a half, maybe three at most. Um, but but he wants to be here. And I think he proven that he is a valuable defenseman for the Edmonton Oilers. So I can see him staying. So there you have it. I am saying, I'll just kind of do a recap of it. Colton Sevier stays. Kyle Terrace is gone. Derek Broussard gone. Josh Archibald stays. Chris Russell is gone. Ryan McLeod stays. Uh, Jesse Pugliarvi is gone. Kyler Yamamoto stays. Mika Koskinen is gone. Mike Smith stays. Evander Kane gone unless Duncan Keith retires and Duncan Keith is the big question I don't know where his head is at he's talks with such a poker face and such a calm demeanor that you don't know where he's at he's he's a 50 50 I think he might play out his contract though and stay with the Oilers which means Evander King will be gone anyway guys that's all I got for you today uh continue enjoying your summer i'm gonna bring content from time to time i thought it was gonna take the summer off but stuff comes up and ideas come up so i want to still do some videos so from time to time i will shoot another video your way um i'm thinking maybe on sundays i will do a video of the week kind of thing and and go from there anyway follow me on twitter um and then leave messages below uh to anything that you may see in a discrepancy that i've said or anything um and correct me i don't mind being corrected i do make mistakes we will talk soon guys you guys enjoy the rest of your day